Let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about this movie. Well, let me see if I can find this one. Here we go. This is from the Daily Mail. Holy wokery, bad girl. Tom Leonard investigates why Warner Brothers' ninety million dollar new superhero movie has been deemed so awful it will never be released. So I, I saw this and I really wanted to talk about it because it's a massive get woke, go broke. Apparently they put $90 million into a Batgirl film that was super woke and they canceled it because when they showed it to people, the people said, this is a terrible movie and you shouldn't have made it. And so they <laughs> scrapped it. It's a lot of money to scrap. I kind of want to see it now. I Yeah, apparently that's what's, what's happening. People are saying like, give us the film and we'll finish it. Let us see. But I bet it's really bad. Yeah. I bet it like... I think we can't hate watch stuff or even like curiosity watch stuff. Like then they'll be like, oh, so you did buy a ticket. So we should make this. <laughs> like if they canceled it, just let it go. Like that's uh, probably good. Uh, they say the audience feedback was so awful that an almost unprecedented move, Warner Brothers has decided the reputational damage of releasing such a dud would be even worse than wasting the tens of millions of dollars it already spent on it. It just didn't work, said an insider. The decision is also a blow for Glasgow, which has stood in... Uh, for Glasgow, which had stood in for Gotham City in the movie. Okay, that's who weird. Look the, at this who costume. Was the lead? Who was I don't the lead? know, but this costume looks like it's like crappy cosplay. Well, they already failed no. because we all know that female superheroes are supposed to wear um, mini skirts and stuff. But this is uh, this but is. But then that's huge. like over sexualizing her. So like, can't do that either. Yeah, they no they one... trapped themselves <laughs> into a corner where they couldn't market this film. Like right. it's not it's not clear who this audience is for. I think this may be the end of what wokeness in movies. I think this shows ninety that million dollar end. They the spent a ton of money. Realized they made garbage that nobody wanted. I mean, how long did it take for people to finally realize when they're like, you know, maybe your average dude doesn't want to see a super ripped woman punching people in the face. Maybe. And your average woman doesn't want to see that either. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I think it was, it might have been uh, Bill Burr, or I can't remember which comedian it was. They He's said, funny. They said that uh, the WNBA should, where are all the feminists? All the feminists should be out there watching the WNBA, but there's nobody mm -hmm. there. Where are the women at? Nobody watches it. Because nobody cares. Right. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to watch men's basketball what, either. What, what is so. this obsession with like creating men's things for women that women don't want and men don't want? This is such a weird thing too. And especially in, in films and, you know, narrative. Because what they do is they say, let's take this, this character that is a male character and let's just turn it into a female character and do exactly the same things with it that we would do with a male character. And then it's like, you know, feminist and forward thinking and progressive and all of that. But if you're going to build a female character, you have to build a female character that is female at the core. You can't just like gloss over, you know, you can't just like basically trans a male character in a narrative. I think I know how to do it. Mm. How to trans a male character. In how a to make Batgirl work for women. Here's what you do. It's Batgirl, right? She's a crime fighting superhero. And then she starts dating Batman and he like is totally into BDSM. And is like choking her and stuff, you know, like because Fifty like Shades 50 of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, you know women the, love that. Okay, but the perfect one was the the Michael Keaton Batman with who was it? Was it Michelle Pfeiffer? Was Catwoman? Catwoman. Yeah. That was great. It was romantic. It was it was actiony. She was cool. Everyone wanted to be Catwoman that Halloween. But it's Catwoman. It's not Cat. There's no Catman. Because it's like that's a female character from. We the should core. make Catman. Yeah, but every grade school kid knows that. You know, cats are girls and dogs are boys. Can't Everyone thinks it's just no, no, the way no. it is. But it, but it is. It's, it's weird. Everyone thinks cats are girls. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm like, I don't understand. Got the feline, no. female. It's no. like we have we have uh, Bocus and people are like, what's what's her name? And I'm like, it's a dude. I mean, he's a eunuch, right. but he's a dude. And he eunuchs are still pisses everyone. Eunuch. Yeah. No, but so. my, my my point was like, if you were going to make a women want different things, right? I made this point a couple of days ago. I made it several times the past week when I was on this plane. And we got hit by wind and we fell like 50 feet. You just drop every single man on the plane screams. Not a single male did. Because like men and women are different. Yeah, I would, it's, it's, I would scream probably. What is the screaming yeah. from? Mostly I would gasp. I don't know. But like, why when I was scream? a kid. The, uh, the, the hypothesis from evolutionary psychology mm -hmm. is that if a bear, if a threat, uh, uh, if a woman perceives a threat and she doesn't scream, she's more likely to die. Oh, so oh, okay. screaming alerts the males of danger. And crying they, they does as well. They had kids. The screamers had the babies. The little girls in my neighborhood when I was a kid would have screaming contests. Oh, what? wow. Yeah, to make sure. And it would be dusk and I would be like at home because I had to be home by dusk. And I would hear like these screaming. 
and the neighbors would get so mad. Everyone would be like, you kids, stop screaming. We think something's wrong with you. We think something's wrong. You think you need help. And they were like, it's just a screaming contest, Mr. Lorio. <laughs> <laughs> we would have peeing contests. We didn't do the that. Boys no. from up I can on tell top you. of the up on top no, of the no, clubhouse. That That's, That's weird. Yeah, I'd use. I'd win a lot of those. <laughs> Congratulations get it into the cemetery. Thanks. Into yeah. the cemetery. Yeah, we had a cemetery that. in our you backyard. You were pissing onto beyond. graves. Never made it to a grave. Oh, okay. It's a little too far out. That's, that's <laughs> horrifying. Yeah. Anyway, my point was, I, I saw this story. I want to talk about it because I'm thinking like, it's been it's been over a decade since the rise of wokeness. And now we see like critical race theory, critical gender theory, but this is huge because if they're willing to tank $90 million without, and they don't want anyone to see this, you know, maybe they're starting to realize it. This stuff doesn't work. The old stories are not bad stories. The old narratives are there for a reason. They've lasted thousands of years for reasons. It's because we relate to them. We understand them. It's because they're part of the, the narrative that we use to tell ourselves the story of humanity and the story of our lives. Did you guys catch Tomb Raider? Or ever follow that game or movie? Uh, yeah. It was, uh, what's her name? Played t- Angelina Laura, Laura Croft. Yeah, Jolie. Jolie. Yeah, the 2000. You, is there like any desire or interest in like a woman with a sword that's bro. a badass fighter? Bro. Like, for, do you, for men. Bro, hold on, hold like on. That. But you don't get into I, that? I recently watched Tomb Raider because it was recommended on Amazon. And it's clearly just a movie for, for dudes. Dude. Like Angelina J- Jolie's boobs are like mushed forward and pointy like the Tomb Raider character because they only had polygons or whatever. They had very few polygons. And there's actually like a scene of her just naked in the shower for no reason. Yeah. It's like the movie was clearly not for girls to be like, yeah, like I'm going to be strong like her. And I was like dudes watching a big breasted woman. In, in but there of- are like, there are fun movies that are like actiony rom com type movies. Like I was thinking about this the other day. Remember? Shaun uh, of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead was great. Romantic comedy with zombies. I don't go. Too, right? I love it. that movie. See? Boom. Great. There it is. Make more. I've been told I have bad taste in movies. I love that movie. The movie's fantastic. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but um, what was I saying before I got sidetracked by that movie? Oh, you remember the uh, remember how there used to be all those old movies with uh, Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner? Do you guys no. know? Okay, what are you talking about? Okay, what's so, what? What's an example? What's one of them? Uh, Ant Man. He's in that. They, they did a movie called Romancing the Stone, which oh, was I've kind of, of it. like it was kind of like Indiana Jones, but they were teamed up at the beginning and they hated each other, and then they fall in love, and everybody gets soaking wet in the waterfall, and there's yeah, diamonds yeah. and things, and then they go off on some paradise because they're rich now. Is, you is know, this what women fantasize about. This is this is like what these movies were, and they did very well. Mm. I was thinking now they're like, let's just have a woman be like a super ripped muscular boxer. So yeah, like, who hates men. Yeah. And has absolutely and you can't tell at all what her priorities are or what she wants in life. Like what do these characters want? And, they, well, and the, over, men, the men are one dimensional and they're like, You can't be a boxer. You're a woman. According to right. Romance in the Stone, they want overcoming miscommunication. So like they didn't like each other, then they realize, right. oh, we actually do like each other. Right. They want adventure yep. um and to be rich. And then right. to retire in and comfort. To look, and to look good. There's a meme. look fine while you're doing it. Yeah. There was a, there was like a, Kathleen Turner. There was a meme in that, the 80s. May, that might not be true, but someone posted on the internet and it went viral. They said the male power fantasy is to save everyone, the children, the women, other men, to put the fire out, to be a superhero. That's why guys love these movies, war movies. It's to like save everyone. And the female power fantasy is to be able to do whatever you want without consequences. So in like a lot of romantic comedies, it's about the bumbling, you know, woman who just gets what she wants in the end, you know, well, through misadventure or something. I'd argue that the woman in, uh, I don't remember her name, but Gone Girl, like that female character is crazy to me. I would watch her all day long because she gets to do whatever she wants because she's operating on a really intense psychological level. I think women, I, I have never really been interested in watching girls fight like physical combat with women if you're if that's what you want to watch fine but i don't think it has the same appeal for a female character as seeing female characters control a situation psychologically or through emotion i think that's much more of a feminine trait than seeing them punch someone and that's why when you see really well written characters they are in some ways reflective of true gender norms um, I think that's really interesting. You're making me. I, I keep thinking about Game of Thrones. I don't. You probably guys probably have seen it. If not, but there's this character called uh, Brienne of Tarth. There was this woman who, that was like a, a warrior, and she was yeah. huge. She's like six five or something, and she's pretty big for a woman. But they put her in this armor, and she could barely move in the armor. It was like grating and embarrassing to watch. And it, society didn't want to talk about how how horribly awkward it was to put this woman in this massive heavy armor. She could barely move. But they were just like trying to shove it down my throat. Like this is what a woman warrior like, dude. At least like put her in something she can, she can 
carry. Mm. Like, so it doesn't look embarrassing. Like, oh, it's just ne- disgusting to watch. It was really, really piss poor that they did that. I'm sorry you had to watch that. Yeah, it was. It was like, and I, you know, I, I didn't even the, realize how bad it was till halfway through this. I the, was the watching. Ca- it. I, was the like, casting I just can't of, lie to myself anymore. <laughs> the casting of Brie Larson is is Captain Marvel. For those that are familiar, it just made literally no sense to me because she's like a short, frail woman who's supposed to be this like great warrior, this massively super powerful being. And I'm just like, pick your narrative, man. Like, what are you going for? You're going for a short, very thin, frail woman. They might as well have cast uh, Kristen Chenoweth instead. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Well, and I think is... all this stuff's going to start backfiring on them. Well, because no one wants look at, to look at, see look it. At, uh, look no at, one wants uh, to see it. What was it? Top, top Gun? Mm-hmm. Like, that did great, right? It was fairly generic. They didn't even mention the name of the enemy country, but I think they did the same thing in the first Top Gun anyway. And it was good. It Dude, was just like a regular movie. I thought what you said was very insightful that women, uh, their power fantasy is manipulating people as opposed to the man is fighting people. Mm-hmm. Because like I've been listening to a lot of psychologists. I think Jordan Peterson and other people have been talking about women like high school girls will, their power thing is they will manipulate others and make other girls feel bad about themselves. Oh, yeah. Whereas the guys will bully. They'll like push. It's much more physical. I mean, you hear people say like with men and women, like women are grudge holders, right? And like the idea, I mean, it's kind of a stereotype, but like, Guys, if the if the argument gets really heated, eventually they'll just throw punches and then it's kind of over, right? They have a way to physically de-escalate a situation. Where if, with women, we don't, I mean, some girls do, I guess, but like for the most part, they aren't as prone to physical violence. They are much more prone to like social and emotional man- manipulation because they are in some ways more in tune to that naturally. And so like, I just have never really understood these like why the push to have women be physical fighters when they actually are crazy in another realm like they can be maybe that's why didn't oceans 8 make a bunch of money the all-female reboot of oceans 11 like actually did really well oh i I don't know yeah i think it actually made a lot of money well john john mulaney had this joke about before it came out like you could never have an all-female cast of whatever oceans movie because women you know there would be seven of them and then two would split off to talk you know talk about the rest of them like it doesn't it doesn't work it's not reflective i mean with uh thor love and thunder we talk like natalie portman got a lot of heat for like or her arms actually is ripped by the cgi whatever but what it i was, was, CGI, was interesting, i think to a certain extent yeah, yeah i mean she's petite like even in i from i'm not an expert please no one judge me on this but like from the comic books it's actually like a six foot tall kind of like much more athletic looking i imagine like a volleyball player body type uh and they chose that i mean maybe natalie portman is perfect for a lot of other reasons i can't they cast her in the role and uh, right but they were like it's better to have this very petite woman and then it kind of defies expectations because she's actually a great warrior or something like i don't understand why this is appealing at all i don't i I don't think it's that interesting There's there's another uh there's another like i think woman's power fantasy too that i think uh it's very taboo to talk about these days, but that we can hear in, you know, old pop music, for example. Like, if you look at Amy Winehouse on Holy War, right? So the fantasy in that song is that she's going to back her man no matter what. If you look at, like, um, a song that I recently remembered and started listening to, I was like, oh, this is great. Uh, Midnight Train to Georgia, right? Gladys Knight. She's singing about how this man she's in love with is leaving LA because his dreams didn't turn out right and he's going back to Georgia and she's like, I'm totally going with him. You know, I would never not Song go writing with him. is so much better. You know, <laughs> songwriting is great. But Amy Winehouse and, you know, Gladys Knight and there's others, you know, like mm-hmm. you hear it, I think, in some Aretha songs as well. Um, but this idea that the, the fantasy isn't about uh, your own aggrandizement or your own, you know, success or power manipulation, but you know, your greatness lies in boosting your man, Mm -hmm. you know, and like the whole power behind the throne thing. Yeah. I mean, I think I say manipulation, but like really women, if you think of like the stereotype of like hunter gatherer, right? Like the men go out and they have to like be physical. They have to hunt and capture things, but women stay home and basically hang out with the other women and the kids and they have to keep an eye on what's going on. Like there is a different skill set that's needed to do that. I don't, I mean, maybe they would fight in the village but for the most part you really have to learn how to navigate socially that's why just just just, just take a look at the noble domesticated fowl oh yes (laughs) the chicken the chicken and the rooster (laughs) and now the rooster will run into danger sacrificing himself to protect the hens when you watch the chickens eating all the ladies are like pecking the ground and the rooster's standing upright just looking around 
He's like, ain't nobody coming near my ladies. And That's then really they, sweet. If a fox will <laughs> yeah, come. Yeah, it does seem that way. Well, I, I, at, I mean, first. at first. At I, first. But it is. It is. I mean, and then he takes what he wants. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the chickens just, you know, they're like, it's oh, the here he goes. chicken harem. Here, yeah. Do you think they think like, here he comes when he comes walking in the room? Sometimes they run. And it's like really, really crazy to watch. Like the chickens are like just <laughs> frantic and the rooster's chasing them. But no, like if a fox shows up, the rooster will run straight at it knowing it will die giving the hens time to flee. Have you seen this? Has this has this happened on Chicken City? We had a hawk attack. No way. And the rooster ran towards the gate and then stood in front of it, making noises as the hens all ran in, and then he went in last. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy to watch. He was like, not going to go in until all the girls were inside. That's cool. But like, the hens are really dumb. Uh-huh. So I think what he was doing was he went to the door. It was a small little door to show them where it was. They So they all follow him, and then he waits outside for them to, go, to get safe, and then the hawk... I think the hawk actually got hit one of our chickens and then wasn't able to get off with it. And then the, you know, the rooster, Roberto. But Roberto's been retired. He was just, he was banging his daughters too much. You know, yeah, it's, you, it's, can't, it's definitely, you can't let that go. Well, in chicken society, it's called line breeding. It's kind of okay. But when he has too many kids, then it's like, okay, buddy, like, you're, you're, you're off. Yeah, but no it. thanks. We, uh, I, you were right about Ocean's 8. The, uh, the the sequel, all women's sequel, it budgeted seventy million to make, and they made three hundred million yeah. worldwide because it was about a bunch of women who were manipulative and catty and stole a bunch of money from dudes. It made slightly less than Ocean's Thirteen, but it also cost slightly less to make. So see, there you go. Seems like they're just doing so you, fine. So you want to do a movie about women? Make them sly and manipulative. People are going to be all down for it. Oh, and tell women's stories as opposed to yeah. like just grafting women on top of men's stories. Yeah, I like the idea of supporting the man only because the man then supports well, the old, children. Yeah, I mean, this is an old story, right? This is like an old class of narrative. Like the there's the Bible story. Who is it? Is it? I'm going to get the name wrong. Is it Esther? It's one of them, right? And she ends up married to the king or whatever, and he's not Jewish, and she's not his biggest fan. But like... He, she ends up bringing him around, and then he does right by the, by the Israelites, and it all works out. We should end. we should make a movie where it's like the main characters are the women, who are married to the superheroes, and then like all the superhero stuff is just ancillary background stuff, like and mob wives. Is that mm-hmm. what it is? I don't know, oh. but it seems like that would be what that would be. And I was gonna say, <laughs> but it's just like the women doing things that support the infrastructure behind the superhero. And so it's more of like an interpersonal drama. Yeah, the show okay. should be called Superheroes, but it's about the women. No, this is a great idea, and it shouldn't be called that. But I like this. <laughs> but I like this idea. This would be a really fun film. Mm-hmm. This would be a really fun film to write and to watch and to costume. I mean, this would be great costumes. If it was like actually writ written as like a story, women were interested in hearing, as opposed to just like making the women big burly superheroes punching guys. But right? No, I mean, this is not a movie that Hollywood would produce right now because we aren't supposed to have women who are like secondary or playing wives and mother figures right like that's not supposed to be but it would be great right. and it's it's but that's start, the story that most women are start actually at like a kid's it would be birthday way party mm-hmm. you know and like all of the moms are coming over and there's like a pool party and all the kids have like weird things they can do because mm-hmm. their dads are superheroes yeah, and they're yeah. all just sitting be there fantastic. chatting but then you, know? you gotta have a villain like slams down from the sky and attacks the party that's if you want to get everyone to like it no, the the villain would be <laughs> the wife. I feel of like the it's always villain. happening in the yeah. background. The like, villain would be like, yeah, it would be the wife of the supervillain, and she would come in, and you would think she's the villain, and then it would turn out that she's actually really nice. And no, no, she I got invites it. everyone to like the, I don't know. Their it turns house. out, <laughs> it turns out the villain is the supervillain's wife, and the superhero's wife and the villain's wife are fighting. Because they were at a department store and there was one cute dress on sale and the villain's <laughs> wife bought it first. Okay, that's not. And now that's they just. Nice. Nope. <laughs> now no. you've gone like. You guys right. are out of the writer's room. You're, You're just throwing the villain or like playing it's cards. It's like a dude like, trying to write, write for women. Yeah, it's like you are geez. off the that's edge. That's not what it would be. That's no, but it would be like this. The, you know. But if you want to go really classic, it would obviously there would be some sort of a fair situation. An affair. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like the Ooh. villain, the super villain's wife is actually like having an affair with like the oh know, that's the, actually the interesting. Chad mm-hmm. superhero. Yeah, and, and also political and, turmoil. And the, the Chad superhero's wife is actually like she's the leader, you know, because there's always a leader. There's always there's like always a, a head of the girl. girl pack. 
so she's in charge and then it turns out and blah 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 yeah that actually would, it's that much more really interpersonal well. like i get what you're saying like it might be nice to have someone explode but that's and, yeah not and like the 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 superhero the top superhero's wife's best friend would start to know about the affair and yeah. like she doesn't know if she should tell there's ethical conflict we are complicated guys yeah. i don't know yeah. what to tell you, then you but get the this would be and the wife's a really friend. good film but it would like the lighting should and it be would, really bright like and it should be really it should bright look like um nature colors like almost a little yeah. overexposed and it's like a weird suburb of some kind like, yes mm -hmm. yes yeah, so I hope someone's writing all this down because this is this is gold. Well, we don't have to, right? Because it's it. recording. No, but the, the, the thing is too, like <laughs> the 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 social consequences of the superhero dating a supervillain, like having an affair with a supervillain's wife. Yeah, yeah. and, and then his wife's friend finds out, and he's got to talk to her about yeah. it. They get secluded in a room where or he's just like, got to confront her. about What it. happens when the pop when when the public hears that, you know, he's intimate with, you know, the family right. of these villains? One time mm -hmm. it happened. One time. No, but, but it's didn't, ongoing. It didn't yeah. happen one time. And then you have like these great scenes like at a like at a rundown roadside motel, you know, and you have like the loud sound of like real cicadas dirty. and uh, the weird guy who's like smoking cigars and it's sort of like the light then, is weird. And, and then you cut to a scene of like their kids playing together. But you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do a scene. No, no, you gotta, you no, gotta, no suicide. No but like the villain's <laughs> wife. Stop. You don't get it. Okay. Yeah. I'll just give you. You got to do a scene where like the wife of the Chad superhero like goes to confront him and she finds him at this old motel and it's like thunderstorming and then she's like catches him in the room and then she screams and she storms out and then he runs out after her, and they're both in the rain and he's like don't do this and she's like you did to me and they're arguing right. in this rain pouring down and then he picks her up and they kiss in the rain His right and then friend. we have a and then we have a you know stand by my man moment like mm -hmm. will right. she stand and the only way that she can stand by the man is they got to get rid of the villain wife and now they're like super villains on, but that's to, like, ultimately feeding the conflict between and the super the, villain and the hero yeah and then they leave town and then you have a sequel because now the villain and the villain's wife had to start over somewhere else no 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 turns out they're villains right. they're into it they're swingers yeah but they still have to leave they can't go to the pool parties anymore mm -hmm. oh yeah you can't and like then you have the kids being like why can't we play with evil junior i don't understand evil junior. Right. <laughs> we'll work on the names. and and yes. the you know the, the and you have this moment wife, where you say like what do i like say she only wears versace yes. You know? yes 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 she's a wrap dress girl <laughs> yeah. thanks for checking out this segment from the timcast irl podcast but if you want to check out the full show live Tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.